Hi everyone, this is the video lesson of 5.4, the derivatives of y equal to sine x and y equal to cosine x, part 2. So again, if you haven't watched part 1 yet, please go back and watch it. We talked about the warm-up. We did examples 1a, b, c, and d. And we're now going to move on to example number 2. Determine the equation of of the line tangent to y equal to sine 2x, where x equals to pi. So I hope you've tried this. We're now going to take it up. Step 1. The fact that y equals to sine 2x, you can find y prime. This is going to be cosine 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. Since you're looking for the slope for x equal to pi, the slope equals to y prime of pi, which equals to 2 cosine 2 times pi. And again, you can use the calculator. You can do a little bit of mental math. But I hope you recognize the fact that cosine of 2x is going to give you 1 and again this is where you can even graph this mentally right to kind of see what cosine looks like and again you can use the calculator I'm not saying the calculator doesn't work you for sure can do it in radiant mode but in terms of the graph y equals to cosine x 2 pi is right there and this point is 2 pi 1 so the slope is going to be 2 times 1 which is 2 Again, you can put a box around that. To find the equation, to find the coordinates, and the fact that we know x is going to be pi, you can plug it back in to find the corresponding y value. That's going to give you sine of 2 times pi. And in this case, y is going to be 0, which means xy equals to pi 0. And again, I'm going to put a box around that. Again, you can use the calculator in radiant mode. You should also be able to recognize, uh, recognize this by now by mentally thinking about the graph. So again, if you think about y equal to sine x, the graph looks something like that, right? And again, 2 pi is going to be right here. This location is going to be 2 pi, 0. Now that you have the slope and the point, we can find the equation. This goes back to grade 9 math. One method is to write down y equal to mx plus b. The fact that the slope is going to be 2, x is going to be pi, y is going to be 0. You can solve for b. So in this case, b equals to negative 2 pi. This means y equals to 2x minus 2 pi or if you express this in standard form, you can bring everything to one side, you're going to bring it to the right, except you equate this to 0. So 2x minus y minus 2 pi equals to 0. And again, that is standard form. And you know that because a, b, c are not fractions, they're not decimals. a is a positive leading coefficient. Okay. Now, Let's keep going. Example number three. And this is similar to your textbook. This is not similar. This is from your textbook. Example number six on page 254. Determine the maximum and minimum values of the function f of x equal to cosine x quantity square on the interval. x is an element of 0 and 2 pi inclusive. So step number one. The fact that f of x equals to cosine x, you can find f prime. So f prime equals to, and again, you can apply the chain rule. If you write one extra step, you can think of it as cosine x in brackets, square. So you bring the 2 down, copy cosine x to the power of 1. You multiply by the internal derivative. And when you differentiate cosine x, that's going to be negative sine x. Step 2. 
define the critical point. You set this to be zero. If you rewrite this, this is negative two cosine x times sine x. And of course, the opposite of multiplying by negative two is to divide by negative two. So zero equals to cosine x times sine x. And again, you can even put brackets around them. You can draw a line to separate this into two different columns. In the first column, cosine x is going to be 0. And mentally, I hope you recognize, x is going to be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And again, you can do this with a calculator, which works. You can also think about this graphically. And if you think about y equal to cosine x, the graph looks roughly like that. And the points that I'm describing are basically, um, oops, are basically here and here, right? At pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Now, likewise, in the second column, sine x is going to be 0. And again, I hope you recognize x equals to 0, pi, and 2 pi. If you're mapping it out graphically, you're thinking y equal to sine x, which again looks roughly something like that. And likewise, these are the points that I'm referring to when I solve for x, which are 0 pi and 2 pi. Now again, your goal is to find the maximum and minimum values. So what you have to do is compare them. So let's continue here. So what you're really doing is you're comparing the endpoints along with the critical points. And you really want to form the habit of putting this in sequence. So for example, the endpoints are 0 and 2 pi. So there's f of 0. There's also f of 2 pi. Those are the endpoints. If you think about the critical points, there are three of them. And I'm going to put them in between. So they are pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. And again, you can double check quickly. You know, you can kind of go back and say that I really include all of them. 0, pi, 2, pi. 0, pi, 2, pi. Pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. Pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So now that you've checked them, you can now plug it back into the original function. And again, the original function is y equal to cosine x quantity square. So in the first case, cosine of 0 is going to be 1. 1 square is going to be 1. In the second case, cosine of pi over 2, that's going to be 0 times itself. That's going to be 0. Likewise, cosine of pi. That's going to give you negative 1 multiplied by itself. That's going to be 1. When you plug in 3 pi over 2, that's going to give you 0 times itself. That's going to be 0. Last but not least, cosine of 2 pi, that's going to be 1. 1 times 1, that's going to be 1. Now remember, they're not asking for the coordinates. They're asking for the maximum and minimum values. So the largest number here is going to be 1. So therefore, the maximum value equals to 1. And the minimum value equals to 0. One more example. Example number 4. This is from your textbook, part C. And it says if y equals to cosine, oh, sorry, if y equals to a cosine kt plus b times sine kt, where a, b, and k are constants, show that y double prime plus k squared times y equals to zero. So again, press pause, spend five minutes, just try this. And when you press play again, I'll be right here, and I'm going to take it up. Here we go. In order to do this, you want to figure out y prime and y double prime first. So the fact that y equals to a cosine kt plus b times sine kt, y prime equals to, again, I want to make sure you're with me, a you copy. When you differentiate cosine, it's going to be negative sine. So I put a negative and I write down sine of kt. And I multiply this by the derivative of kt, which is k. So notice how I'm going a little bit faster on you. I want to make sure you're really connected. Plus, b. b you can copy. That's a constant. 
we need to differentiate sine that's going to be cosine kt times the derivative of kt which is going to be k so I'm going to put down b k in front and I put brackets around cosine kt likewise when you find y double prime same idea let's try this again a k I copy of course the negative sign I can copy when I differentiate sine that's going to be cosine kt don't forget to multiply by the derivative of kt which is k so k times k is going to be k squared bk I'm going to copy for now when you differentiate cosine that's going to be negative sine kt again you multiply this by the derivative which is k so k times k is going to be k squared now we can do it you start with the left hand side and the left hand side says y double prime plus k square y and again y double prime is going to be negative k square cosine kt minus b times k square sine kt plus k square times y y is the given and that's going to be I'll open a bracket a cosine kt plus b sine kt close the bracket now I hope you can see this because when you're expanding everything and you're collecting like terms you should notice that the first term and the third term are opposites so there's the negative and positive a k squared cosine kt likewise the second term and the third and the fourth term are also opposites so there's the plus and minus b k squared sine kt and of course this is going to be zero which is exactly the same as the right hand side so really important that you practice number one of 14 your math skills are only as good as your last set of math homework so until next time all the best and I hope this makes sense.